The day when a ballet dancer in this country was thought to be some very rare kind of bird and ballet and indulgence of big city people with capital C culture seems to be over. Something like a revolution has happened. According to one survey, ballet is out drawing folk concerts on college campuses. And not just in the big cities. Dozens of new companies have opened in cities that only a few years ago might have called ballet toe dancing. To train dancers, a whole new batch of schools have opened. Not simply charm schools to teach a gawky 10-year-old some grace, but tough professional ballet schools. This is one of the most prestigious schools in the country, the American Ballet Theater of New York. 200 young people have come here to audition for a place in the school. They come from all over the country, all with the same idea, to one day become a premier dancer in New York, the major league of ballet. There is only the smallest chance that any of them will. For most, this is the first step on a path strewn with disappointment. Leon Danielian, a dancer himself before he was stricken with arthritis, is director of the school. If you've got a hundred uh, applicants in here, you might accept, what, 20? 50? About 20, 15 to 20. 15 to yeah. 20. And then of the 15 to 20 that work very hard here, how many does the... Oh, maybe two or three at the most. Two or three and make it with... Yeah, make it in a big company. Perhaps one out of several hundred will be a ballerina, prima ballerina. Two or three will be soloists, and perhaps five or six will be in a corps de ballet, and some may just stop midway in their education, their dance education. And what do the rest do? Well, they, they give up. I want to be a ballet dancer more than anything else, and I'm willing to devote all my time to it. You have to be so devoted to get up every morning and go into those studios, 10 o'clock in the morning, so cold. The last thing you want to do is dance. And you have to, you know, bring yourself together and do it, no matter what, because you know that actually you love it, and that's what you really want to do. I really don't know what it is, and I don't think most people know what it is that makes them want to dance. It's just in them. It's, it's, it's un, it's, you can't express it. Jane Hickey, 16, of New York. She doesn't know it yet, but she's going to win. She'll be one of the 27 selected as worthy of continued training in the scholarship class, the elite of the school. But now she is just one of the 200 trying for a place. I hope you've all warmed up a little bit. For all of them, this is the moment of truth, their first professional test. All the desire in the world counts for nothing. The judges look only at physique and movement. If they don't have it now, they never will. Beauty has a great deal to do with it. Physically, uh, an attractive body, primarily. Not, not a facial beauty as much as a physical beauty. And each dancer has one natural gift. They either have a flexible back, or they uh, normally extend higher. Some have a natural jump. Some just balance without having to be trained. But it's to accumulate all of those things into one person that's important. To love to dance doesn't have anything to do with it being able to dance. It's a, it's a depressing day, the audition day. For me as well as the students, for all of us here, you know, because you have to turn so many down. Parents stand outside in the corridors and they say, but you didn't look at Mary. And I said, well, who was Mary? They said, well, Mary was the prettiest girl in the room. Well, Mary, of course, wasn't the prettiest girl in the room, nor was she mo the most talented. But the parent sees one thing, the student who's auditioning sees something else, and Miss Wilde and myself see quite something else. All right, now thank you girls very much for auditioning. Uh, we're just looking for special types, so it isn't anything personal. Please don't, don't get any personal offense. Some of you are not old enough, some of you are a little too thin, some of you are a little too heavy. All right, so thank you very, very much. Wait a minute. Tears and they come and they want to have a personal interview with you and you can't tell 80 people why you haven't accepted them they just must be dropped it's like uh, horse racing i have my money on a couple of them and, and i don't know whether they'll come in or not for those who are dropped the disappointment is unbearable a few will simply give it up but most will try to prove danielle and wrong they'll try other schools other auditions some will put in years before they face the simple facts. For the ones who made it, a room like this one will contain their lives until they too are dropped. 
which unhappily is very likely. The odds are against any of them becoming premier dancers. They know this, yet they've committed themselves to a regimen more demanding than any athletes. It is a total commitment. PT and fifth on down, down, down. It is school with no nonsense, enthusiastically accepted torture. No matter how elegant the French positions may sound, dégagé, they ask the limbs to do things they were never meant to do. Three, four, go, one, two, three, arm up, go, one, two, three, Tommy, you two, tempo more definitely, out and up, two, three, four, go, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, piquet, fermé, dégagé, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, Four and one, two, three and four. Cindy, you're not quite putting the foot down. You can't write down. The dégagé goes right to fifth position with the heel down. One, two, three, four. Heel right down. All right. Did you see how you pulled yourself back on onto the that you'd start if you were slightly slightly back? Then as you let go of the bar, you pulled forward so you stay straight. Stay. That's a girl. Is there a great deal of competition? Among you all, between you and some of these other girls. Oh, yes. It's unreal. <laughs> I mean, the walls just echo it. It's really, yes. I mean, everyone, they may not always be aware of it, but everyone is always watching everyone else and seeing whose leg is a little higher or whose foot is better or whose jump is good. It's always a competition. But you have to be able to, you know, not always worry about that. Just work for yourself and not worry what everyone else is saying about you. Everything like that. You didn't go up high enough on the ball of that foot, Franny. One. And two. Stay. Stay, Debbie. Stay, Deb. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and hold it. Arms down. And thank you, boys and girls, very much. The work, the exercises, the movements, the pace. It is relentless. Six hours a day, and sometimes at night. Trying to make that perfect connection between brain and body. When they are not dancing, they are thinking dancing. And jeté. Wait for the music. Piqué and a one, two, and piqué. Oh, one. The 16-year-old body is still unsure of itself, especially when asked to perform solo under the brutal gaze of classmates and ballet mistress Patricia Wilde. Oh, Jane, come here. Tell me. Come here, come here, come here. Why do you want to do relevé there? You just make it more difficult for yourself. Huh? Each time, relevé, you gave me one PK out of six. That's right. It's easier. It goes balance, say, and PK. Right, right. Bring the heel front. Bring it front. When you're in a point class, it really hurts. The tip of the toe. Now lift the knee. And arm one, two. Go on, take a chance. Go back, go back. Contract in the tummy. I don't think anyone can understand who isn't a dancer. They might try to sympathize or seem to understand, but you really can't understand what it is. The pain that you go through, there's literally pain that you go through. It's, it's great if you want to dabble in it. I mean, there's nothing nicer than a nice dance class every so often. But if you want to be a ballet dancer, it's just work. Are you ready, do you think, or could you be ready for, say, a blow that might come when someone downstairs says, Janie, forget it. You're not going to be a dancer. I'm always ready for that. I'm ready for it, but I'll never accept it, at least not for four or five years while I quit. If I started to think about the odds against me, I mean, I'd probably quit tomorrow, you know? I just have to keep on going, because I know this is what I want to do. So I'm just going to do it, no matter what. And a one, two, and a one, two, go, and one, don't fall forward. Three, four, and a one, two, pas de basque, one, two, so de basque, three, four, and go, one, fifth, please start, group the feet, Go and a one, two and a one, two and a one, two, three, fifth, Padabasco one, chasse, two and a one, 
fifth, Clistad Assemblé, Badabasque one, two. Next group, get ready. Go on, one, two, go, three, four, and go. The path that Jane Hickey has chosen is not unlike the taking of religious vows. She has become wedded to something that does not accept a job as simply well done. Mediocrity and ballet, at least in the minds of the involved, cannot be contained in the same studio. A life of unrelenting fatigue, even pain, where heartbreak is the norm and the chance to work the reward. And squeeze that fifth out of your feet. Go on, oh one. Two, and oh one.